Hey everybody, this is Craig. So I'm known to mispronounce a word or two here or there. And usually after some mocking from these guys, I'm corrected and we move on. And then now I know the correct pronunciation and I'm thankful to these guys for setting me straight. But once in a while, okay once, I was right. I know it's embarrassing to the people who falsely corrected me, but I thank them for their efforts. Forgive them for they know not what they do. But however, when I confronted them with my linguistic success... Before I could light off fireworks in celebration, Brad was quick to douse out the flames with a fire extinguisher to the face in the form of the Oxford Dictionary. Now, I had presented my case with the Webster's Dictionary, but apparently that's not a good enough dictionary. I thought that having the time to write down every word in the English language with their full definition in between shooting a TV show made that little black kid a genius, but again, I was wrong. So I guess I'll just stay in my lane from here on out and let the college guys handle the intellectual stuff while I just stick to the dick jokes. So maestro, hit my music. All right, welcome back to Needless to Say, everybody. This is Dave. I'm here with Brad and Craig, two guys who are actually as culturally significant as what's buried on Oak Island. (laughs) 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 And let's not forget Mike, who is the closest thing we have to that alleged buried treasure. He's nowhere to be found. (laughs) (laughs) Also no longer on Hulu. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But... (laughs) But before we get into our week, I, I want to take a moment and recognize a group of people. March 29th, which happens to be today, the day we're recording, yes, is National Vietnam Veterans Day. Yep. So my father's a Vietnam vet, so I'd like to take a minute and say something to him and all of his fellow veterans who served in America's most unpopular war. It's going to be something that a lot of them didn't hear that a lot of our current troops do. So I think it's worthwhile, and for that... I want to say thank you for your service and welcome home. So I'd like to raise a, a can to the middle, have a drink Absolutely. for our Vietnam vets. Absolutely. All right, so thanks, boys. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, we've honored our vets. No, that's, a, that's awesome, man. That's a great thing right there. Back to our normal ass holiness, right? All right, yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. Is it ass holiness or ass holishness? I suppose we should ask Merriam Webster oh, over that's here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get back to you. <laughs> Come on. You're the pharaoh of phonetics. Let's have yeah. it. <laughs> Spent three hours on Wednesday trying to convince me it was pronounced dykehead. <laughs> <laughs> Created six of his own Wikipedia pages yeah. just to convince us he was right. And then he spelled Wikipedia wrong on all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> his shit's only available on the dark web now. <laughs> <laughs> That's where shit gets real. <laughs> Craig's misspellings have gotten him into a gun ring. <laughs> oh man! So, explain your intro. You tell us why you think you're right, because this was at the head of my week in review. Yeah, well, I, I, the editor got schooled, and you know what? I'll admit when I'm wrong. I mean, this isn't that moment. <laughs> <laughs> but when it happens, well, he will. Yeah. yeah. No, well, I found out, for one thing, it can be pronounced either way. What can? Biopic. Or biopic, if you want to be an asshole. Uh, (laughs) I mean, I I know that, you know, I had relatives with cancer, and they all went for their biopsies. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that's the thing, is it's not, it's not pronounced, though, it's not pronounced like that. It's, it's separated. There's a reason for it. I don't know. I'm sure one of you guys do, but, and I've heard, that's the only way I've ever heard it as well was biopic and then confirmed it. It was so funny because after I went through all the, went through all this with you guys railing on me all week, (laughs) I was listening to another podcast and Anthony Cumia said, oh, he said, he was talking to Jim and and he said, Hey, he goes, you know, he goes, you should, you should appear in the biopic. And I was like, see, I'm not the only one. <laughs> so, so so your argument is Anthony Cumia versus the Oxford Dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> which the developed o- the language. The Oxford Dictionary has both. 
in it. <laughs> I would also like to mention that, that you said that that's how you've always heard it pronounced. Yeah. You grew up around a bunch of immigrants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. This is true. <laughs> okay. This is all going to be in no. Craig's autobiography. Yeah. <laughs> and that's spelled with an apostrophe and the number seven. A bunch of capital letters in the middle of words in his book. <laughs> you find it in the non fiction section. <laughs> I'm, I'm still curious about how many of Brad's family members are going through their chemo right now. Uh, <laughs> quite a few, quite a few. Now, I, we, we're picking on you a little bit now. I, I, we're kind of jumping around our weeks, but I had a little bit of karma hit me this week on this very topic. Nice. At work. So I've, I've mentioned before I train a lot of new employees, but part of my job is I actually actually do some like voiceover work for like e-learning modules, things that you watch. Brad yeah. joked about sexual harassment videos like i'll do voiceover work for some of those things <laughs> not the, not the sexual harassment videos i was gonna say you're <laughs> natural <laughs> yeah, right you're the before part of the video yeah, right yeah. <laughs> so, hey uh, baby come over here <laughs> fax oh, this you yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> dave sexually harassed somebody via fax <laughs> Xerox has Wait, a eh, 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 just a picture of a dick coming out of the dick. <laughs> when he Why? puts it in backwards, yeah. so the balls are coming at you first, and you think it's the letter B. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not allowed within 50 feet of a dot matrix printer. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, I, I did this voiceover work, and it was probably I did 50 or so different clips of voice work that it gets put in. Yep. And the the tech guy emails me a day or two later says hey can you you know re-record a few of these i had to make some changes and but with a few of them he said can you pronounce this word differently you pronounced it wrong and he sent me a youtube video with how to properly pronounce it yeah and i stood there in my office at home staring at my computer fucking cursing craig out for 10 minutes before i could re record <laughs> this stuff but i want to throw it to you guys to see how you pronounce it Here's the word. I'm going to spell it. It's L-I-V-E-R-Y. It's livery. Livery? Craig is correct. That cannot be right. <clears throat> it's a livery. It's livery, which is what? Livery is another term for what? Uh, a livery is it's a storage. Um, they, oh, right? no, you're gone now. No, it's, no what is, I'm trying it's, to think. It's a cab. It's a cab, yeah. Oh, it's a cab yes, or yeah, an yeah, Uber yeah, or yeah. Lyft, right? Well, no, see, I'm thinking, like, Olden times, a livery was like a was something totally different. There was no cabs back, then. but <laughs> right. but it's spelt the same way. It's, so that's why when you yeah, said that, it's a I livery, said livery conveyance is the full terminology, and I was pronouncing it the way Brad did, livery. I win uh, again. Which is funny was, because it, delivery boom. makes sense, but some words because we bastardize the English language do change when you add yep. uh, prefixes and suffixes to them. Yeah. So I, I understand where you're coming from. I'm still going with livery. <laughs> See now, here's the here's the bigger part I had he with won't it. Was, admit when he's was wrong. It? He's lying. <laughs> ten minutes it ago, wasn't, it wasn't even ten. It was he's six. put slapped on an aluminium yeah. foil hat. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> bloody hell, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> it also dawned on me I've been pronouncing it wrong for almost nineteen years now. This is part of an auto insurance policy. This language, every one that we have. Yeah. And I've been in insurance since 2001. Been pronouncing it wrong this entire time. Yeah. And I'm the one struggling to keep my job. Yeah. <laughs> this is good. This no, is good. That's one thing I love about my job is nobody gives a shit what I say. They expect you to be dumb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you pull up in your work van full of poke holes in your passenger yeah. seat from your butts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, a soda can and a baggie yeah. blowing down the street when I open the door. <laughs> Nobody cares. Oh who should we get to do the flooring? Should it be that nice guy in the commercial? Or should we get the guy who just reeks of ash? Yeah. <laughs> With the nice bullet hole sized ash marks on yeah. his seat. I, I want my carpet to smell lived in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's going to do the best job. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I didn't mean to hijack y'all's Recon review, but I thought that you Greg, just you said y'all. Damn it! 
I heard it as it came out. And I tried to just talk past it. Just, or as they say in Webster, Yale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I take a library right the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, since you've gone this far, how was your week? <laughs> yeah. So that, that was the middle of my week being knocked off a, a few pegs by Craig, and that's demoralizing enough. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> but I, I do have a, a little, I don't say piece of news, but an update for Brad. Ooh. Last week, Brad, actually, it's been more than just once. You've talked about how your, your wife doesn't tend to laugh at your jokes anymore. So my wife said, you tell Brad that I think he's funny. Well, thank you. So so my wife thinks you're funny. That's awesome. She's lying. And I, and I want you... <laughs> <laughs> and, and I promised I wasn't going to do this, like, literally 10 minutes ago, but I want you to tell your wife I think she's fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa! <laughs> she already knows. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, Ray. Thank you for the nice words. My wife, it's funny. We did it again the other night. She gave me a chuckle on something, but only because the joke I made Mercy related to chuckle. It, it, it was a related to a story she knew, so she wasn't really laughing uh, at yeah, me. Yeah. She was laughing at, at the, the memory. Content? Yeah, I yeah. Got you. but no. When Craig sits there and he could read the side of a cereal box, and all of a sudden she's on the floor and stitches, and then Dave comes in with something to do with human waste, and that's it. <laughs> it's over. It's game yeah. over. Game over. She was like, "Great fucking episode. Great episode. You guys are really good together. Dave and Craig have been really awesome." <laughs> yeah. What about the guy sitting next to you in the room that made all this happen yeah. in our home? What do you think? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She's like, no, you were good. <laughs> Want a beer? And that was it. Uh, yeah, so, whatever. So I appreciate the love coming yeah, from East no, Providence. She, she, yeah, no, she's, she, and I've heard her laugh at your joke. She, she's, even the text messages, we, we bounce back and Truth forth. Truth be told, I yeah. think it's because she's used to hearing me talk all the time. That's that's yeah, what it is. is. Yeah, that's all. That's it is. that's what it is. I, you know, all I, the listeners I are say, like, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> that's not I say stuff to my wife all the time, and my wife just looks at me like. Idiot. <laughs> She's like the least judgmental woman I've ever met. My wife? Oh, we're talking about your wife. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, that's spot on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> All right, so now I've made fun of your wife, hit on his. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's disgusting. My cousin. <laughs> I love you, Ray. You're the best. Nice. <laughs> so you also had a parenting win this week. I oh heard. my god! Yeah. So, so the so our the baby officially starts daycare next week. So by the time I was listening, she'll be going on our full time schedule. This week we brought up her test run, just to bring her in, get her used to the room and the teachers and the other kids. An hour before I'm bringing her over. This is duct tape. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, you have to use painter's yeah. tape so you can rip it quick. Yeah. These are Nikes. Get to know them. Yeah. You'll be making a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Dave's headline next week, I'm saving so much money on daycare. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I'm wearing size sixes, but I'm good. Yep. Um, <laughs> so an hour before I bring her over there, She's getting off the couch, loses her balance, and headbutts the coffee table. Ah! Uh. Not just a glance on it. She full on middle of the forehead, hit the coffee table, an instant like egg. Jimmy Superfly snooking. Uh, d- well, she <laughs> has a rectangular bruise on top of an egg in the middle of her forehead, and I'm like, "Great! I have to go bring her to a state-run daycare now, oh, where nice. they have to report everything, and so. then make sure that there's no treads in your boot that yeah. max." That- <laughs> <laughs> so an hour. So it took me half an hour to calm her down. I've got to get her in the car in fifteen minutes. Oh and my so god! It was. I brought her over there. She was fine, but the poor thing. It was instant swollen. Oh, oh poor my kid, god. man. That's, that's actually a good thing, though. It's when it doesn't surface right away that yeah. you got to worry. Yeah. yeah. So it was. It, I brought her over and I said, "Please forgive the big knot on her forehead." <laughs> she wasn't listening earlier, and I had to get her. <laughs> <She was, laughs> It's also why my wife's not here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't mind the smudge on the glass window you think in the car. She looks bad. You see my wife. Did <laughs> <laughs> you see Dave going up to the. I had to tell her twice. Elbow, elbow. Yeah. Yeah. 
waka waka. Yeah. No, it's, it's, <laughs> but the problem with being a parent is I can't just go in and be like, oh, she hit her head. There's instant anxiety on. I may have to explain exactly what happened yeah, to a bunch horrible. of people. Like Brad had this with the, with your dog a month or two ago. Oh well, with, uh, when he yeah. bit your daughter. Right? I wish my story started and ended there. But but it's the same. It's it, that yeah. was. I was instantly thought. All right, I hope she's okay. And then right on the heels of that was, um, everybody's gonna think I'm an asshole. Right. It was that I did it. Yeah. That's the thing. You immediately become like you're guilty. Yeah, and worse than that, I was trying to figure out, all right, what the hell am I going to tell my wife? I can't tell well, her she yeah, just rolled off that. the couch and hit the table, Yeah, because then I'm a bad father. Yep. But now that I'm thinking about lying to my wife about what happened, I'm a bad husband. Yeah. I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> just screwed. There's no out on that one. No, but really, she's, I mean, she's a toddler. Can I make it's another recommendation? Oh. Don't record it and put it on the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but she's a toddler. That's what kids That's do. That's what happens. They fall. Like My son, he's seven in a few days. He'll turn around too quickly and fall over. Oh, yeah. So she, it's just that age. Like That's yeah. what happens. That's how they learn their balance, how to do things. But Both of my kids rolled off changing tables. Yeah. Both of them. Yep. Splat. It's amazing Dumb. how fast it happens. And they recover. Yep. They're fine. I think their nature makes them this way. Mm -hmm. That's why yeah. they're all fat and chubby. That's and why the heads are soft and stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> They're like bumbles. They bounce. Yeah, exactly. I mean, my kids, you know, Ethan, I had to say a sentence to my mother once where she called because he was sick. He was spiking some pretty hefty fevers. And I remember my mom called and I was so frantic. And she, I'm like, okay, mom, the good news is I didn't tear his rectum. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> now, you realize this is a sentence that nobody should ever say. <laughs> In, about anybody. About anybody. <laughs> Young or old, male or female, at no point in anybody's existence should the sentence start with, the good news is, I didn't tear his rectum. What happened was, Ethan was spiking those fevers, and you and Dave can attest to this, you know what happens, you can't, you gotta take, your temperature. You gotta take the temperature the only uh, way you know how. Yeah. And what happened oh. was, he clenched and oh, flailed, and he, well he flailed, oh. and at that point, he let out one of those silent screams. Yeah. Oh, they cry, but there's no sound? But there's not a sound oh. to be had, because he's got a pointy glass thing in his anus. Oh, so I, yeah. I, I can... Get the idea. Like, I know I'd be speechless, too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But sure. So then my mom's like, what? Because I realized at that moment, I hadn't told her that I was taking a yeah. temperature. Uh. <laughs> so that was a good explain away moment. Yeah. <laughs> Couple more elbows. Chuckle, chuckle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it even happened with my daughter at daycare. They were doing, we had a daycare right in downtown Warren. And we had transferred her from a daycare we weren't happy with. Or at least at the time, we thought that they were pretty bad. We went to a what we thought was a better daycare. Yeah. And I've told this story on the show before, but it's been long enough. We'll do it again. Uh, I get a visit from the Department of Children, Youth, and yeah. Family. And I'm like, what is going on here? And it turned out they had Feelings Day at school. And my daughter, who was barely three, if she was even three, and she did in her broken English, kind of like Craig, <laughs> came in and said, they, they go, what makes you sad? And she goes, when my daddy hits me. Oh, no. Oh. And what she meant to say was when my if my daddy would hit me or something along yeah. like, I would not want my daddy to hit me. Yeah. And then she followed this up with the great, well, that one time daddy kicked the computer, which did happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at this point, everybody at this brand new preschool says, oh, oh well, we're going to go pay a visit. Now, I yeah. work at home. And it was I call some... those entrapment lessons. <laughs> That's what they're doing too. They, Which, but they have to. They have to. They have to. They have to do that. And I mean, I, I know don't with think they my were kid. Oh wait, kids. no, I don't have any. That's right. It's awesome. Now my God. The baiting thing, I, I don't think that was it. I think they want to teach the kids how to express themselves properly, yeah. which I'm all for. But my daughter didn't have a mark on her. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. And I've never laid a hand on that. Kid. No, I okay, know. but you know she comes home. Then the DCYF person comes and the nice eardrums are probably <clears throat> fucking wrecked. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly from when I kicked that computer, it echoed yeah. through that shitty old house. <laughs> <laughs> but then the DCYF car has the big DCYF logo right on the side of it, and she purposely parks on the street as opposed For to in my driveway. Everyone to see it. Everyone can see it. Oh. Okay, and then again, I work at home. 
and it's the middle of summer, so I'm wearing my finest Metallica T-shirt. <laughs> weird, weird, weird ghetto camo shorts. My hair, my hair was don't a little, say sandals. I had slides on. Yeah, I knew it. I'm and sorry. I went to the slides. Those things are, those like, things like, are hideous. Like look, those Adidas, like yeah, the flip flops without, without, without the toe, toe thong. thong. Yeah, yes. You call it a slide? Yes. I've yes. never heard that term. Well, it's, no. it's actually what's I call them, on them Vato. <laughs> <laughs> okay, spell it and then pronounce it right. No. <laughs> <laughs> My dad calls them felony flops. Well, as it turns out, that's where this was headed. <laughs> 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 so uh, the, the woman spent all of five minutes in our house, saw that our house was clean, and I, I invited her up to check yeah. out the bedroom, make sure there was no blood or chalk outlines or anything. Right. And But we were on record with them for three years. No shit. And, or at least we thought that my name, my last name is very commonly misspelled, and they misspelled it. Oh, no. So, so, so I feel bad for those people <laughs> that use the A instead of the O. <laughs> but then again, fuck them all. We took her out of that daycare shortly after because they were horrendous people. And I know one of them ran for office and lost miserably. Oh, boy. And I'm glad because if she can't handle, you know, the, the hefty load of the town of Warren yep. political yeah. aspirations, yeah. then I'm pretty sure she can't run a fucking daycare either. Yeah. <laughs> oh Hope she chokes on her own vomit. Dude, my, my daughter wrote a story at school. It had to be two years ago. So that was first grade, first to second grade. And it was called... My tooth is about her. One of her, you know, they're losing teeth. Yeah. <laughs> the first line of the story is, "Have you ever had your tooth knocked out by my by your father?" I have. Uh <laughs> <laughs> first line in her story. <laughs> so matter of fact, yeah, yeah. Have you ever had your tooth knocked out by your father? I have. First line in her story. Now it's a That's true story. Fantastic. She went on, thank God, and the rest of the story to tell what happened. We were out in the yard playing, and for a while... The, yeah, I think I was like, the <sighs> end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have Just the end. six pages of tears. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a picture, a picture of a smiley face with a missing tooth and blood spraying out. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the drawing of the teacher and Dave pointing at her going, you're next if you don't yeah. this in A. <laughs> but we were out in the backyard playing and my my backyard is kind of terraced so it kind of slopes up away from the back no it doesn't kind of slope up it's a hill it's a fucking everest it's climb. Not, uh, <laughs> you need you need those fucking ropes and you like you ever see those things you're gonna bang into the fucking <laughs> rocks like in the movies, that's how you get to the top of his backyard. So, <laughs> so we're up there, Dick. Um, <laughs> and we're playing soccer. We're all running around. And I turn. As and the ball just kept me. rolling out to the street. No. <laughs> <laughs> the ball rolled all the way to Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait for your party. I'm going to get like the to oh, yeah. topographic Google Maps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <it's still> fine. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's backyard's the highest point in East Providence. <laughs> Every day he holds a baby like Simba. <laughs> his, his neighbor hasn't seen a sunrise before 10 a.m. in fucking years. <laughs> Every other house on the block advertised as shady. <laughs> It's kind of like if Craig was laying down and his neck thing was in your neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> it's been two episodes. Let's get on. <laughs> that, it's not even worth it now. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. No. Yeah, by all means, please continue. Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. But no, it just it just turned out like I I turned as she ran by me. My my forearm hit her in the mouth, and she already had a loose tooth, and it just knocked, knocked it, out. it out. Yeah. But that, I mean, that was the story, but she came home. I didn't know she was writing the story for school. She just came home one day with, like, the grade written on it and said, hey, look at the story I wrote. And I opened it up. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. I had that, I'm going to get a phone call. But well, then luckily I read through the rest of it, and she explained. She actually drew a picture of us playing in the yard. I was like, oh, thank God. 
Yeah. But yeah, the first line, have you ever had your tooth knocked out by your dad? No, I it's have. great. It's, it, like, when, when I was in school, I could be like, you ever been slapped upside the back of the head by your father? I have. Everybody would be like, well, you deserved it. it what'd you do? <laughs> what'd you do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> Over. <laughs> but that's the difference. Nowadays, anything happens. There's an instant anxiety that you're going to have to, like you said, well, you have yeah, to defend yourself. You, you're going to defend yourself for nothing, and it's... But even but that goes to someone like me, too. I don't have kids, and you know how many times, like, you know, I I like kids. I'm not, it, you know, it's got nothing to do with that. I'm afraid to talk to a kid. <laughs> like if I'm in a store and there's a kid, I'm like, get that thing away no. from me. <laughs> 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 I want to. I don't even want to near me because I've had that thought in my own kitchen before. But go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> No, so, he does that whenever he comes over here. It makes things awkward. But I don't. I don't. Put it outside. To, you know, I don't even want to like smile at it. Mm-mm. Stop talking about it like it's a rock. I <laughs> don't. Keep saying it. <laughs> <laughs> well, like it's a dead raccoon you found yeah. in the road. <laughs> Start poking the kid with a stick. Get out of frozen foods. Go, yeah. go. But it's. But you know what I'm. But you know what I mean, though. It's like it's it's scary. It's like all of a sudden people are gonna look at me like, "What's this freak doing over?" You know? Why are you talking to that kid? Why are you talking to that kid? It's like what? You know what the hell? Yeah. I just gave him some candy. What's wrong? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just showing him the inside of the van. <laughs> Dave's like, "Come here, I found Neverland." All I did. <laughs> All he did was go there to buy lie in a shovel, and now everyone's all up in arms. <laughs> Plastic bags and like just ungodly amounts of rope. <laughs> yeah, my GPS just says woods. <laughs> <laughs> At least you can explain away the carpet. <laughs> days I wanted to like show up at your house and expect to see your van with the atom shaped lump yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding Adam if you're out there I've never met you man I owe you one <laughs> Craig how was your week um better than both of yours <laughs> no, no, no no actually very quiet nothing just got the quote from from a couple of people for the fence. Oh, you yard. got them? Yeah. And? The fences aren't cheap. Nope. <laughs> it's expensive <laughs> to, to keep that. people out. But I'm going to go <laughs> put a deposit down tomorrow, so that'll be all set in a few weeks. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, other than watching more crappy movies and stuff like that. Yeah, that the it. response to our Birdemic thing, I should mention this, the response was good. From the people, a lot of people are mad at us after they've watched Birdemic. Yeah, <laughs> because they watched it. Because they yeah. had to watch it. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I do believe we spent 38 minutes warning them. Um, we explained it pretty well. We were I thorough. think so. Yeah. I actually got one criticism from right inside my house. No names though. <laughs> uh, and, and, and this woman uh, actually <laughs> came and said, "You know, it would have been better if you guys actually discussed the movie in order." And I'm like, "If you can't fucking follow this film." <laughs> on your own. I mean, because, yeah, we did jump around a little bit. So did the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Our timeline was probably better. <laughs> <laughs> I was half a... <laughs> we had an outline with three thoughts about it, which is more than this script. Yeah. <laughs> Way more thoughts than the guy had than when you wrote it. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't watch that one. I, I did watch another movie, and we'll talk about that later. Yep. Um, but I, I'm still watching Smallville. I'm on oh. season seven. Now, last week, Dave unceremoniously cut me the fuck off, and I know he wants to now, so take I, take another drink, Junior. That's all right. I'll, I'll let you go. Because th- there was one new low that I think people who like this show will appreciate. They get a lot of cameos from teen stars, or at least people that used to be teen stars. And so they, I guess they, Aaron Spelling must have called in a favor, and he got his weird platypus-looking daughter. <laughs> She flies. She flies. She, yeah. She flies. She, does. she looks like the fucking turtle from the never ending story. <laughs> I was going to say she looked like Dory, but all right. <laughs> well, anyway, Tori Spelling shows up as one of the many enemies that Smallville faces. Because honestly, 
after seven seasons, if the U.S. government hasn't figured out that weird shit's happening in Smallville, <laughs> Kansas, and they're just letting the, everybody gets a new power every week. Tori Spelling's one was particularly funny. If I'm the writer, I'm writing this and chuckling the whole time. He made her a shapeshifter made of water <laughs> that can assume not only any form, but also any other person. She can just kind of morph into somebody yep. else, and yet she chooses to look like Tori Spelling. <laughs> <laughs> she was mid-morph. The whole time. (laughs) (laughs) She looks like Rochelle Dennis. (laughs) (laughs) Join us this fall on New Line Cinema. (laughs) Ask. Eric Stoltz was busy that week they filmed. Is that what yeah. it was? <laughs> Eric Stoltz would have made a more convincing female shapeshifter. <laughs> Tori Spelling looks like a manatee fucked a boat shoe. <laughs> <laughs> one of the ugliest people in the world and one of the best examples of white privilege and, and rich privilege in this oh, country. Oh, shit, yeah. That whole show, 90210, had nothing but good-looking people, and then featuring Tori Spelling, so, and she always threw her hair back over her shoulder in the credits. <laughs> yeah, and, and you could see her neck where the bolts used to be. Yeah. <laughs> Hideous bitch. Man, it would have been better if she could act. You right? Oh my god, she couldn't even act. But somebody on Smallville said that's a good idea. So, anyway. Uh, <laughs> That with a Smallville this week. I'll, I'll get back to you with season eight next week. All right? <laughs> Let's get into the show. <laughs> Speaking of ugly people with bolts in their neck who probably have a little bit of privilege of their own. Yeah. I don't want to do it, but we have to. Jussie uh, Smollett, folks. Uh, oh, God. It was not three weeks ago when we brought him up, maybe four, but we brought him up and we talked about the fact that there's no way in fuck this guy's getting off. Yeah, no, there's no way. I mean... Wrong! Yeah. That's why they say don't leave early, kids, because the story gets good. Yeah. And holy shit. Not, it, it's insane. The entire city of Chicago civil servants are up in arms. Like, they're going to stop working. They're so angry about this. They're suing him for $170,000 to cover the all the fees. The costs, yeah. As well they should. They should. Nobody's denying the fact that he made this up. Nobody's denying the fact that he hired two Nigerians they in, in whiteface. They have- they have a check. Uh, Checks that he wrote the, to these guys. No, and they have all the evidence in the world to prosecute this guy. They're like, <clears throat> it's it's just ridiculous. It was basically caught red-handed. Mm-hmm. And I think someone with his, I, w- I want to say with his platform, he really didn't have one. He's not the most famous guy, but he's on one of the most popular shows on television. Used to be. Ratings have well, yeah. plummeted. Well, yeah. As well, they should have. You saw the acting on that show, right? <laughs> I watched. <laughs> should have happened a long time ago. <laughs> Eight minutes of the pilot, and I said, "No, I'm not going to enjoy this." Yeah, no, it's not a good show. Um, but someone, what I'm saying is, someone with his platform that you know, if something like that happens to him, it's going to be blown way. <clears throat> if me and you were walking down the street and some dude jumped out and pound, fucking pounded the shit out of his fucking. No one would give a shit. It makes the local police blotter. That's yeah, it, it makes yeah. the local police. Someone like him, it goes, it goes viral. Yep. And then, and we saw it. It went worldwide. Yeah. You know, and he persecuted a group of people that had nothing to do with it. He knew he'd get a reaction by yes. point, pinpointing that and, particular group. Yeah, and I don't give a shit what group it was that he did it to Mm -hmm. they didn't do it right (laughs) he wrongfully accused whether the people are scumbags or not he wrongfully accused a group of people and put further division in this country i have to say one of the things i think they were afraid of is a race riot in chicago for what because if they did prosecute him i do think there are some people who will show up at every race related thing and create a stink. They would be outside the courthouse, and I think there would be violence. And if there was ever a city that doesn't need any more of it, it's fucking Chicago. Yeah. yeah. So I think what's going on there is they said, honestly, what is the world going to gain by locking up Jesse Smollett? Well, it, it, he's not a hardened criminal. 
He's not no, going to hurt anybody. No, he's not. And I think that their logic was, do you really want the back and forth race discussion the, to go on I about guess our the city? the continuous circus show to continue. Uh, and in that yeah. sense, he won. Every decision in this case has been PR driven. Yeah. By everybody. And it shouldn't have been. And it shouldn't have been. But my thing, too, though, is when he came out his, uh, his um, press conference... I will still fight for the wrongs of it. Like, he came out like he was a hero. He should have came out and said, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. He didn't have to go into wicked detail. It would have been just better to say, I'm sorry to the city of Chicago, I made a mistake. Um, I appreciate the leniency. And the yeah. support you know, of people and, that and believe. I, I, learned a, I learned a big lesson today. Yeah. And walked away. That's what he should have no, said. No, because that's concession. That would have said, I'm wrong, and then he would have lost his spot on the show. wrong. And, he, and you know what? <laughs> Everybody with the common sense knows it, but do you know what happened this week? A lot of black actors in Hollywood came to his defense and said, thank God the truth came out. And and I'm not what? talking about like third-rate co-stars that are on that no, shit show I with know. him. I'm talking about actors that yeah. we respect are all coming out and going, thank God the truth came <clears> out. What truth? Exactly. That's what I mean. They're, like delusional now. They're just hoping we forget yeah. because there's so much else going on in the world. Plus, yes. another thing happened this week. Our president, who just, just buried the whole Mueller thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He just can't help himself. He decides, you know what? This would be a great opportunity to get back on Twitter. <clears throat> yeah. Which he had been off for like, that Special Olympics thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get that off to the side. <laughs> you imagine him at the Special Olympics. Well, none of these guys are good. I'd, yeah. No. <laughs> I would be the best track star. <laughs> oh, look at him. He dropped the baton yeah. again. What's he retarded? <laughs> <laughs> but he felt the need to tweet on it. Instead of just saying, thank God, can we get back to running yeah. this country? Yeah. No, he had to comment on Hollywood again. And again. Yeah, maybe this wasn't a Hollywood thing, but it kind of mm. was. Well, it was, but it, well, you know what it was, though? At the same time, it was, it was uh, um, a justice thing. So kind of see it in a sense because these, those are federal laws that are broken. You know, these are felonies. Do you think he set out to break federal laws or do you think no. he just was so dumb? No, I he think didn't he was realize. Just so dumb. Yeah, that, I, I yeah. agree. But what he, I'm he saying did, is, yeah, he didn't see the extent these, these of where are, this would go. Yeah, these are felonies. These are um, big things. So, I think when people like us are looking at it like, but this guy just got away with doing that. It was it, he didn't get away with murder. It wasn't you know, <laughs> I'm not, it wasn't murder. Yeah, I mean, he but basically filed a false police was, report. Yeah, he, he filed a false police report, but that situation that he was complaining about was big. That cut the division in this country a little deeper. The division's already there. He made it worse. It, he made it worse. Yes. Well, for the and, for, temporarily. <clears throat> Nobody's yeah, going to remember that yeah, name in no, a few years. He's no, going to show up in Trivial Pursuit. I know. But then Trump but, came in from the other side and jumped on the same knife and cut it deeper. He's like, yes, exactly. Oh, yeah? I'll show you, uh, black yeah. guy. Black guy, yeah. you do this better. Yep. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> no, but it's it's true. It's you could just... say that about anybody in this conversation. Yeah. Idiot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Idiot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought you meant black guy. I'm like, that's false. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just looking forward to see him show up next year in, like, Medea Reborn. <laughs> yeah. Oh Re Medea Resurrection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This, I'm tired of seeing the Smollett story, though. It's like, no, it's, it's like it, fucking gonorrhea. It just won't go away. Yeah, exactly. But it was it actually was, kind of what drove tonight's theme. It, it is. Because Jussie Smollett tried to be a social activist. Yes. And Jussie Smollett failed in no, every... He's a supporting actor. Period. Yeah. Be and that. That's what, I just didn't like the fact that he came out like, I will still be a social justice warrior again. No, you just faked something. You created the issue. You, you have no credibility anymore. No. <laughs> so Pack it up. A Andy Kaufman did a better job because he actually went and died. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And he made yep. his point a lot more convincingly. Yes. Let's hope Smollett follows the Kaufman model. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what Jussie Smollett should have done, though, is stay in his fucking lane. Yes. Yep. Know what your job is. You're fortunate enough to have a career in Hollywood. Nobody needs you to be a leader revolution. No. Nobody's turning to you for that. Just continue <laughs> to suck on Fox and that's it. And that's it. And yeah, I yeah. don't mean the animal. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't need PETA getting involved now. <laughs> That's why I draw the line. That's it. <laughs> All right, but let's speak about some other animals. I'm going to let Dave take this one. It was a bad week in football. Uh, yeah, I suppose it was a bad week in football. Well, at least I mean, on that side of the table. On that sure. side, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Rob Gronkowski announced his retirement at the ripe old age of 29. 29. 29. Retired. He's got plenty of money. He's, got pl- he's, not, he's he, not broke. He hasn't spent a dime of his NFL salary. Not a, not a penny. He's All the money he spent from I endorsements is, and bonuses. Right. Yep. And also free drinks and blowjobs everywhere he goes. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. His There's life that. is perpetual spring break. I'm pretty sure he blew two nuts during the parade. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sure he did. <laughs> I'm sure he did. But I heard he broke his wrist signing the the contract. Like, <laughs> <laughs> He's on retirement IR. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, are you calling him fragile? Or are you just saying he's got one of those really long, obnoxious Polish names? Yeah, both. <laughs> but the good thing is, maybe now I can hire him to help me pronounce words. <laughs> you gonna hire a big Polak from me. Buffalo yeah. to do that? <laughs> oh my God, dude! Every last name out in Buffalo is like that. Long Polish names, all of them. Yeah. Imagine that from the snow belt of upstate New York. Yeah. Who'd have thunk it? Six consonants in a row, and they sound like. S- because, you know, traveling from Poland and coming over here, you're like, you know where I'm going to go? Where it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I need to live in pain. Yeah, I need to live in misery. I want to shovel feet of snow daily. <laughs> I saw a comedian once who was like, why did Chicago even come to be? He's yeah. like, I want all the crime and pollution of New York, but it's just not cold enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I got theories about Gronkowski, and they, I, they tie into what's going to happen one week from Sunday. The one, the only, the immortal WrestleMania. Uh, Neither of you were invited. Uh, <laughs> Neither of us were coming. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of wish you said that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I I think Rob Gronkowski, he's denied it. Yeah. But I think he's denied it in such an obvious way because I don't know if you know this about Gronkowski, not a bright man. Tight he, pods. He kind of goes by the Webster's Dictionary of Life. <laughs> yeah. Not the Oxford Dictionary. <laughs> this guy, he's dumber than a box of hair. Yes. Okay. Yes. Gronkowski, and that's why he retired at 29. 29. Because yeah. he thinks, I've got all the money I'll ever need. Guess what? You're not going to support that lifestyle forever, pal. <clears throat> no. And a lot of people had speculated years ago because he showed up at <clears throat> WrestleMania one or two years ago. And he did like a spot. One of yeah. his best friends is a wrestler. And so he's got the body. He's got the look. He's got the, per- the personality. He's an entertainer. He is a funny he dude. Is. Is. I'll give it to him. He's an entertaining guy. So him showing up at WrestleMania, the timing is suspect. <clears throat> the instant people started to say, well, is he going to go to WWE? He goes, no, I'm thinking Hollywood, and he denies, denies, denies. I think that's a typical WWE swerve, and yeah. I guarantee you he's going to be there helping his buddy out on a uh, week from Sunday. That said, do you think Vince McMahon would have the balls to say, look, <clears throat> WWE's kind of, they're kind of treading water right now, yeah, and I'm trying to get this XFL off the ground. Do you wonder? I will give you a contract to wrestle here. You will work minimal dates. You will work mi- yeah, only pay per views. Yeah. We'll throw some gold on you, make you look like a this shit. If you show up and play a few games in the XFL, do you think he's got the balls to make that <coughs> request? I mean, this guy came from arguably the most prolific <coughs> franchise in football history. Yes. I think w- w- he's just dumb enough to do it. I think Vince McMahon's got the balls to ask, yeah. without a doubt. Why not? No, why not? Why the kid's not? a draw. And I don't see he's at the age where returning, he could return from retirement in five years and still be, if he maintained, if he went to the gym every day still and maintained his normal lifestyle. Stop five signing years, his name. Five, five, <laughs> so yeah, five years from now, five years from now, he could come back into the NFL and still be effective. He could be. I suppose you're right. I don't think he'd be a good blocker. No, no. No. But, but part of the reason I think he, he retired is he took a beating. But five years, he'd be 34 years old. No, yeah. he took a beating. Yeah. He did. Who doesn't? But but you're right. No, no. You, you, you're right. He's. I think he could do it. If yeah. he's If Brad says he, he could kind of make appearances here and there, the WWE, this, in this yeah. other football league, here and there, 
and keep himself relevant and why not? It would be great if they were like, oh, we want you to play this high school game. <laughs> 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 we need you to come in and play in this game on this team. Finish up your 10th grade fucking credits. <laughs> we'll get you in there. He's in, he's in biology class. Uh, uh, biology, I'm sorry. Bio- biology. Yeah, yeah. He's, in, he's, he's in biology class dissecting the frog and then spiking it. Yeah. Such a fucking dummy. He really is a dumb dude. I, I don't think he made it through high school easily. No, Probably That's not. why I said I thought he was getting a new show on ESPN called um, Tie Pods. <laughs> you just call it um, um yeah um ninety uh, percent of the episode it's just it's like those round table shows they all got and you just see four heads and they're timing them and it's just four people going um yeah um <laughs> over each other you know kind of like when we do a four man show yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know I think the resurrection of the Polish hammer though would be a great fucking name for him if he does wrestle right that's what his girlfriend calls him right. <laughs> It's curved think, at the end, just like you know, now. As, as, as dumb as the guy is, I have to say it. I'm not a fan of the Patriots. I never was. I like the guy. It's hard not to. It's hard not to. He's funny. <clears throat> he's you know, a big he's, goof. He's, like, he's real. He's he is who he is. You know, and I kind of like. I think it's funny. Um, but I could see. I mean, at 29 years old, he is wrecked. The guy. I mean, he's broken more. Bo- he's like glass. He's had a bunch of surgeries too, not just like minor surgeries. Like no, he's had major surgeries because every time he touches something, it breaks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> just imagine this guy just walking in like balsa wood, just collapsing. <laughs> <laughs> I called him balsa wood forever. That's what, that's what I was calling. I'm like, oh, that piece of balsa wood is out there. Because <laughs> every time, I mean, it was causing my arms broken. My arms broken again. My, yeah. <laughs> broke, you know, I broke my leg. Hey, I broke this. I and broke you know, that. as much as everybody wanted you to believe it was because he played hard, it's not. He's fucking fragile. No, he's fragile. And he's fucking rich. I mean, he's big and strong, and he yeah. can play, but he's fragile. His bones are like, you didn't drink enough milk, I guess. <laughs> and, he, and he looks like a bouncer at a bad nightclub. And there's always a future in it for them there. Yeah. Too. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I think my XFL idea has got legs because Lord knows the XFL doesn't have any competition anymore. The yeah. AAF, there's a very good chance tomorrow will be the last game they ever play because they forgot to factor in payroll. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These guys are making 19 bucks a game, and they can't make it happen. Yeah. yeah. No, I, it's insane. They they wanted to, to pit themselves as the minor league team to the NFL. And the worst part, it was, it was perfect. It were, I watched it, the games. I was like, could've. this is good. But I think part of the problem is you were able to watch the games. How many minor league baseball teams or hockey teams do you see watch on TV? Yeah. They spent a lot of money to promote it. To promote it. To get put it, it out in media. Yeah. And they didn't have a fan base. You're going to take a shot to get it, but... But if you're going to be the minor league team, you're not going to get the viewership. If you're getting I guess, national, no, time I guess, out. If you're getting national airtime, how are you not making revenue? No, but what I'm saying is, you should, you should, should expect the fan base. Football is America's pastime. It's We've awesome. said it this is. before. We've said this before. It is. So, football fans should be like, hey, there's no football. Football NFL season is over. Hey, look, more football. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know? And now I can get it in Decatur, Iowa. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and, that, and that's just it. I thought going to these secondary markets. I mean, they hit some of the big ones, but if they hit these secondary markets, it would actually be a good thing. Give a football team to Orlando. Give a football. You know, everybody in Florida can rally around. The, they never really came. Yeah. But yeah. the fact is that they had national broadcasting. They had national advertising. They had backing. Yeah. Where would all this fucking money go? They needed a team called the Michigan Gronks. <laughs> get, get him in there. Did you? Did you? A guys... bunch of Polish dudes running around. <laughs> Every jersey name starts on the like the left sleeve. <laughs> or, 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 it goes all, all the way around. Thirty letters and three vowels. Yeah. <laughs> and the best is, you could tell them all you're giving them ten thousand dollars a game and just give them. A <laughs> hundred. <laughs> just move a decimal decimal point over. Yeah, just they wouldn't it. know. I'm ju- they're just counting zeros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're like what? Five, six. They just run out of fingers. They're like, fuck it. Okay, I made enough money. You just pay them in lengths of kielbasa. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what Polish guys like to do all winter? Ski. Yeah. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,
<laughs> that bitch, you could probably talk him into putting the equipment away at the end and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so you can save a bunch of money, like on that shit. No equipment, guys, nothing. No gator anything. Yeah. Yeah. They just got a piece of PVC with two hoses in it. You see this sweaty guy in his t shirt putting the lines back on the field for the next game. <laughs> 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 did, you, did you guys see uh, uh, Eminem tweeted the uh, the president of the AAF saying that they, they they should let the players fight like they do in the NHL? Really? Yeah. Interesting that this is coming from such a level headed guy like Eminem. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he was pushing to get a team in like Detroit, I think, wherever he is, yeah. right? But he, the the crux of what he tweeted was, you know, just the thought here. Let some of these players fight it out like they do in the NHL. You might get some more viewers. They had to do something different. And the fact is they wanted this to be a feeder league, and we missed the biggest point. They stopped letting them uh, have the certain players that were under certain other yeah. teams' control. Yeah. Yeah. If you're cutting them off from getting potential NFL talent to feature them there, then what's the point of doing this? Yeah. Okay, I, now it's just a wing and a prayer that you'll be like Kurt Warner in the Arena League and yep. get discovered and yeah. then end up winning a Super Bowl with the fucking Rams. Yeah. Okay, but that was rare. That, that, that is the exception, not the rule. The AAF was designed to be guys who maybe didn't have a good combine, guys who had a good college career but maybe not a standout college career and would yeah. fl- you know function better in an NFL offense. Yeah. Guys like that I think you want to keep an eye on. We saw some good plays. That, the couple of weeks that we watched collectively, we saw some good players. We saw some names we knew. Yep. I thought that it had potential to be a minor league, and then they cut them off at the knees and said, you can't have access to these guys. What's the fucking point? Right, what's then? the point? Yeah. And I think again, I'm not. I, I, I don't worship the guy like you think I do, but I think Vince McMahon's got to play in this. No, he tried. I, he tried it once with right. It was, but it was too gimmicky. He, but he tried it once. It, you got to fail to learn. Like that's how you learn, yeah. right? And you make improvements. So he he did that. and It didn't work out well. It's he's not going to invest in something that he thinks is going to fail again. He actually right. just cashed out 270 million worth of his own stock to help fund this. Yeah. And that's probably in direct response to the AAF folding cuz now he's got a golden opportunity. Now they're not an official feeder league. Now he can be the feature alternative football. And he's not going to make the same mistakes. Opie and Anthony are not going to be doing the pregame show. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You're not bringing yeah. Jim Ross, the wrestling announcer, in and go, by God, did you see that tackle? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're not going to have the cheerleaders sneaking in on camera into the locker room and coming out smiling. Yeah. Okay, all that gimmicky WWE shit was... Well, that's what I mean. It was too gimmicky. Yeah. Now the he's names, made, he wants to create names, a real alter- he hate me all that shit. Remember that? Yeah, that that's was, what everyone remembers for. Was, yeah. He hate me. He hate me. That he did five years stupid. in the NFL. His name was Rod Smart. Yeah, and he had a decent career. Yep. I think he's going to present it right. It's going to be an athletic contest. There's still going to be rule changes because I they think have to be. It well, has to. Ha- it have to be a difference. He needs a different value prop, <laughs> and he also needs something that highlights talent better. Mm-hmm. It can't be a slew of whistles. Yeah, I think helmet to helmet contact should be a must. <laughs> in fact if you drop your shoulders you five dro- yards yeah five yards you drop your shoulder <laughs> guy's a pussy <laughs> penalty five yards for being a pussy drop- <laughs> no. <laughs> gotta grab a guy's balls if he jumps up for, yeah. for a catch if you sack the quarterback you're gonna go directly for the knees <laughs> <laughs> try to Theismann plant them yeah oh. exactly yeah if you if you do get his leg to if you get his femur to stick into the dirt, you win the game automatically. The game's over. Automatic yeah, yeah, automatic win and league MVP. <laughs> yeah, league MVP. And, and if you manage to go for the full Taylor, yeah, and you, and that, that's two femurs. That's in yeah, one season. Oh yeah. <laughs> you want the field to look like a biology class? Pronounce it. <laughs> Roids are a must. Everybody has to be uh, like like Romanowski. <laughs> like everybody has to be all jacked up with zits on their back, wanting everybody dead on the field. That's that's it. They do a weekly cup check, and if your balls aren't shrunken enough, you yeah. don't play. Yeah. <laughs> they have to rattle inside the cup. <laughs> Remember Romanowski? That guy—he doesn't do steroids. He has to, ah, 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 on the field, beans are popping out. He's like, "I want everybody dead. I'll kill everybody. Fuck you. I'll kill the coach. I'll kill this guy." 
It's like, what the fuck? This guy's fucking ridiculous. But, but Brian Bosworth, same thing. Yes. He's making fucking movies with that, you know, blonde flat top. Yeah, his. yeah, yeah. You know, five years later, he looks like if AIDS had a face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 Remember that old Barry Sanders and Bosworth? Remember that big showdown? Barry, Barry Sanders, Sanders ran over him like he wasn't even there. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> that was the best. Oh, fucking Just ran over that. him like he wasn't even there. Barry nope. Sanders was the same height laying on his side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man is like a cannonball. He yeah. looks like a Super Mario enemy. <laughs> yeah. The guy could fucking run, though. He was so much fun to watch, though. He was so much fun. Yep. It's all the best ones that we lost early. And I don't mean lost, but like, no, yeah. like Bo Jackson. Best Bo athlete Jack, ever. Yeah. The greatest athlete ever to play. I would argue this, that all, like, he was the he's greatest like this, athlete he's ever. He's like, ah, this hurts. I'm going to go play baseball. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, he was doing <laughs> and both. Be good. Yeah, he was doing both. <laughs> well, he well. won the home run derby. Yeah. In his hometown on top of it. Yeah. I mean, the guy was just killer. Yeah. He I snapped a, a wooden hickory bat over his thigh because he struck out. Yeah. Do you know what's great? Watching these minor league pricks try it. And they end up going on the disabled list. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the injured list now. We're not allowed to say disabled yeah. list anymore. Except That's for right. Sammy Sosa. He did it a couple of times, but there was all caulk in the middle. <laughs> 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 it was crazy, too, because that court gave him that skin condition. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen him? Oh, I haven't. He blends into the fucking furniture. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Pastel pink outfits don't help his skin. <laughs> fucking covered in pine tar. Just, fucking... <laughs> Just change his name to Al Opisha. Yeah. <laughs> it's an Irish name. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, shit. C- could you pass me one of those Alco scents? Right here. Alco scent. What's up with the Alco scent? Yes. The, the topic tonight was stay in your lane. Okay. Rob yeah. Gronkowski. As much as he probably seems like a WWE guy, shouldn't be in the WWE. No. He no. should be playing sports or doing something where he's not going to get hurt at all. Right. Jesse Small. Or talking to people. Yeah. <laughs> like at best, he should be introducing cartoons on Nick Jr. It's <laughs> perfect job. Perfect. Power. Absolutely. Perfect job. So when we, we heard about Alcosynth, we're like, okay, listen, stay in your lane. Alcohol is a time-honored tradition. Yes. It's one of the few things they got right in the Middle Ages. They couldn't handle like the common cold. In the before the Middle Ages, they've been, alcohol's just been there. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus was like, "Hey, you got water? That fucking sucks." Here's some wine. Is he just doing drinking water? Fuck that. I always That's joke that, that Jesus took the bill at the Last Supper because he hosted. Yeah. And, and he got the bill, and he's just yelling, "Guys, which one of you paid for wine?" <laughs> 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 so this week we heard about Alcosynth and Alco-synth. C- Craig or Dave or somebody else talk uh tell me what is Alcosynth? I don't know. It it sounds like a new rapper's name. What the hell is yeah. Alcosynth? It's <laughs> It's uh, like that guy from from Tropic Thunder, Al Pacino. Yeah. <laughs> Alcosynth. <laughs> Yeah, no, my so, new album, Alcosynth Plus, dropping tomorrow. Well, that's it. And it's got to have the number nine in there, even if you don't pronounce it. That's right. yeah. <laughs> Very important. Although Cra- Craig would. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's pronounced both ways in the dictionary. I'm not dropping this. I am not fucking dropping. He comes in in his intro and tries to tell me how to pronounce fucking words. Leguizamo, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> See, I told you. He'll never admit you was wrong. <laughs> now, Alcosynth was a thing, this... This guy's creating it. Um, he's a scientist, obviously, but he's create creating a, a. I guess he's created it, but he's trying to get testing and all this stuff done, where you take it and you get bombed like you were drinking. What is it? But it it's does not give you. There's no hangover. There's no damage to your liver. There's no like side effects whatsoever. So far, this could be Apparently. water. You haven't told me what Apparently. this is yet. What? All right, okay. I'm g- because again, you, he's getting so frustrated. We're gonna over take there. it away from the word genius over here. It's right in the fucking name. <laughs> it's synthetic alcohol. Yeah, that's Alcosynth is the name yeah. of the product. All right, good. Now that we've cleared that up, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I had to explain it to the intelligent people of our audience when I said Alcosynth. Most of it's our families. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> it's in beer. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that include beer That's wine. That's what makes you feel funny. 
<laughs> Pure wine and what is commonly known as spirits. Yeah. <laughs> no. And synthetic alcohol. The guy's no, creating the, yeah. a way to have booze without without too much of a buzz. Like you could drive on this. It gets you. Oh, I don't know. It gets you chill, and it gets you socially lubricated. He used those words. Well, that's in what the he article. said. Social, yes, socially lubricated. Yep. Basically, the idea. <laughs> Is that he wants <laughs> everybody's tell me butt tell, sex now? <laughs> tell <laughs> me, tell me he's from Denmark. Well, no, no. He's... Well, I said this. The one thing I, if somebody creates something that I'm going to put into my body, and he's giving me all these things about lack of side effects and stuff like that, I don't want his last name to be Nut. <laughs> <laughs> With two T's, really, to drive yeah, it home. Just yeah. to drive it home. <laughs> like Doctor Nut. Nut's going to yeah. make you feel better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure he will. He's Listen the one to make you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. Yeah. Long to stay in this lane. We'll get there. This guy's actually got a pretty good pedigree. Uh, he is he a does. neuropsychopharmacological scientist uh, at Imperial College London, home of the Oxford Dictionary. <laughs> 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 and he's basically, he's researched like all sorts of things about Alzheimer's and Parkinson's patients. And he's figured out that, guess what, guys, this habit we have every week. Not good for us. No. Um, it, he believes that alcohol abuse in the way that it, it's not even considered abuse by modern standards, the way that we'll throw back a 12-pack and call it an evening and don't even get affected by it is actually having irreparable damage yeah. to our, our, you know, our cerebral mm -hmm. cortex, I think it is. And what it's he's trying to do is say, hey, I want to get you loaded and chill, but without all the negative physical effects. Yeah. And one of those physical effects, you know, it's going to make all of us happy. No hangovers. Because it's not hitting that part of the brain. Yeah. And it's not dehydrating you like normal well, alcohol. Well, alcohol would. dehydrates you. That's, that's, that's what, what a hangover part. is. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. the hangover is. Everything's just sucked right out of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's created this, as he's calling it, a holy grail of molecules. But it's basically going to give you the kind of buzz that you want when you go out for the night you never say i'm going to puke tonight yeah you, yeah you don't i don't well, want to lay on the oh, sidewalk I, I do yeah. i do <laughs> i know it's going to happen yeah no, you don't want to be laying on, on the sidewalk puking and on your own cheeks like <laughs> <laughs> just rolling down the sidewalk. nobody goes the goal i never go to the bar saying i really want to wake up and wonder how i got home yeah like nobody's doing that so i think what he's he's creating like a cbd for booze. For booze, yeah. It, it, uh, that's a good analogy. I like yeah, that. It's giving you the chill effect. And I think, I, I don't like getting drunk. I like taking the edge off. I don't off. like the double vision. I don't want none of that. I don't want to be wasted. I like being drunk. Yeah, I, <laughs> no, I do like being drunk. The fuck you two are talking about. No, but... I do like being drunk. That's why I drink. But there's, there's a difference between being drunk and just being overly Annihilated. Yeah, 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 exactly. That getting a buzz, like a good, like alcohol buzz, happy, yeah, smiles, hanging I'm, out. I'm more concerned that this guy was researching Alzheimer's and what else did you say? Uh, Parkinson's. Parkinson's, and said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna stick with hangovers. Yeah. <laughs> Those people are screwed, or they'll never remember. Let's go yeah, back to yeah, booze. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he was just studying one person, and yeah. the guy was fucking couldn't remember what he did last night, and he had the DTs. All <laughs> 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 oh, his patients kept shaking yeah, the beer out of yeah. their glass. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Dr. Nut will be right back. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. But, I think it's good, but I, one of my favorite things about drinking is beating the hangover. Like, I'm getting myself good and cocked, but I know exactly at that moment when it's going to cross over. Yeah. And so you you feel good, and then you wake up in the morning, you're like, I drank a shit ton last night, but just and not to, not just one too not many. Not that too, yeah. Beating exactly. the hangover is like, that's the sport that's left. I feel like yep. I've said this every episode the last five weeks, but I really feel like the sport of drinking is still there. It's just taken on a different form. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, it's being functional and not letting my kids wonder why all those empty cans in the trash... <laughs> Daddy's still up at seven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he still got us on the bus semi okay. Yeah. yeah. And besides, it's only Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but at our age, a hangover lasts two or three days. Now. Yeah, if you if you tie a good one on where you got if I get a hangover, it's gonna last. It, yeah. It, it's gonna wreck me for a full day and then next morning I'm still gonna wake up still recovering from that. Yeah. Being, you know, 
my my 20s i could go out and party thursday friday and saturday and sunday i just chill out i'm good to go yeah i mean i remember drinking and then like oh shit my boss is here beeping like, <laughs> like i'm like i haven't even slept yet <laughs> oops run out of the car okay let's go to work <laughs> fucking fight through the whole day oh. they get home like take a shower fall asleep at five <laughs> sleep all night eight, no eight o'clock there's like there's a thousand people in my apartment <laughs> 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 like what the fuck next thing you know i'm like god damn my boss is outside <laughs> <laughs> i did that for fucking ever <laughs> it sucked <laughs> it was terrible but I, I think Craig just left his door open. There were like yeah. deer in there. And just it was ridiculous. You know how many times I would come home from work. Everyone and just took it like, for a warming center. All right, come on. I come home from work and I'm like, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, what's going on? Oh, I was waiting for you. <laughs> Apparently. Craig stumbles out. Have you seen Bill? Yeah, he's <laughs> over by the trash can that's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> No, nah, it was insane. It was just con- it was, and it was nightly. Yeah, it was just people there nightly. So when this shit hits the market, because I think it's going to. Yeah, I think yeah, this one's got legs. Can we agree to do one night completely bombed on Alcosin? On Alcosin, sure. I'm in. Let's I'm do in. It. Maybe we'll love it. It'll be the best thing ever. You no, know, it's funny. He's, ironically, he owns a wine and something bistro thing. Him and his daughter own a. I guess a re- I I get I don't know is it a bistro it's like a wine and something they whatever. serve light food yeah all right we'll we'll go with bistro a pussy bar <laughs> there it is <laughs> just right, waiting they, for you to get yeah. there <laughs> sorry okay there we go <laughs> is that a strip club <laughs> the pussy bar <laughs> yeah I'll have one of those that's forty bucks please la vagina yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have Dr. the veggie vente. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Nuts Pussy Bar. Yes. <laughs> Just walk in. I, get, I, I should have never gotten pregnant and had two kids special. <laughs> if they were selling drugs and their cops went there, they went there to bust a nut. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. Okay. I'm was so terrible. glad it wasn't yeah. me. Sorry, right. that was terrible. <laughs> Delete. <laughs> <laughs> what a fantastic transition into our 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 second of two alcohol stories and the less intelligent one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to read this headline so badly. Oh, please do. Because I love craft beer, and until it does this, you know, a lot of people criticize craft beer fans for being snobs or for being a little too highfalutin. It's just yeah. fucking beer. Stop overthinking <laughs> it. Well, this is where they overthought it. It's yeah. ha- it's happened. Yep. And it's Craft Brewery partners with Kodak to create a beer that doubles as film developer. <laughs> what the fuck? It, it, it's just, that's the most ridiculous idea on the planet. Somebody, this is stupid. somebody studying this. No, there's like money devoted to this. Gronk's next job, <laughs> spokesman. <laughs> spokesman. I mean, it's fucking stupid. Who are you kidding? He thinks Polaroids are what happens when you sit on a cold toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was saying, too. That meanwhile, every craft beer drinker between the age of 21 and 26 is like, what the fuck is film? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No. Th- those listeners didn't get my joke just now. Yeah. They have no idea what yeah. that is. It's like, you said hemorrhoid wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't get it though Like why would you work to develop this Like you know I've had a lot of random thoughts In yeah. my life You know it, it's, it's part of the nature of doing what we do mm-hmm. I have never said You know what would be great This really hoppy Double IPA that Delicious I'm drinking right beer. now I wish I could pour this in a tray And develop a photograph of my mother <laughs> Yeah like Yeah the, yeah. That's like as much as like the, the thermometer Tearing the anus That's a sentence you just don't say Yeah <laughs> I don't understand what possessed them. I guess there was when they're testing it, there must have been some chemical qualities that matched that up with matched developer. Matched up with with develop with film development. But whether how do those it's pH two value even... or whatever whatever it is, whatever there is in it. How does it even cross paths though? How do you as a beer developer say, you know what this looks like? 
this yeah. looks like I could develop film in but it. As a photographer, you're like, oh, I got to develop this film. I'm going to go pick up a sixer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, my wife's a photographer. She went to school for this. Like, yeah. you know, she's she likes tampering with like well, and manipulating. Yeah. I shouldn't say tampering. She likes manipulating film. Film. And so I think this would intrigue cool. her. Because she's also a drunk, so it works out really <laughs> good. But I think she would be intrigued about the, the, the makeup of the beer. I think it's something to do with pH levels. You walk yeah. into the dark room where her hair's all wet because she's had her face in the pan, <laughs> like with the photo the whole time. <laughs> she's like, I just developed this photo. <laughs> Every every one of her photos has like half a nostril imprint yeah. on it. She gets a whole gallery. Yeah. <laughs> Just picturing a bunch of surgeons in a room with like with a, an X ray f- rolled up and like a funnel pouring beer through it to try to develop the X ray film. Well, that's they're a, doing shots. Well, exactly. What that's insurance that's plan do you have that you still go to a hospital yeah. where they do <laughs> photo X rays? <Yeah. laughs> He's got wigging cancer right now. <laughs> You went to that dentist and said, yeah. "Nah, you don't need that lead blanket. Yeah. Go, ahead. Go ahead. Just smile. Keep your keys in your pocket. That's It'll be fine. fine. <laughs> Just put both hands over it. Do I have to take my chain off in the MRI? Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Just hold it really tight. <laughs> Where's the market for this? Where are they hoping to market this? I think this? the market's with Kodak because Kodak hasn't been relevant. Kodak hasn't years. been relevant. Nothing. Right. But, I mean, remember when they used to have kiosks in the middle of, like, Parking lots and in shopping centers and strip malls. Yep. Be a Kodak stand with one dummy sitting in the middle of it. Yeah. <laughs> busy hey, though. A, but busy. There would be lines. Yeah. And the thing is that I'm just waiting for one dumbass to throw his phone into a beer. <laughs> 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 waiting for pictures to pop out. Like. <laughs> Which idiots taking selfies and dumping beers on yeah. their phone? And just like, oh, I'm gonna get a full picture out of this. <laughs> I actually knew somebody once that cracked their screen and tried to do a screen cap to to get it and send the picture to their friends. Look, I cracked my screen and they do the screen capture and no. send it on. And they're like, it's just a picture. What it's is it? A- what, what is it? <laughs> I've actually seen somebody do this, and I and, and one night when I was drinking non alco synth, yeah. I was drinking like absinthe. <laughs> I, I actually tried it. I'm like, oh god, I should, I should cap. Oh fuck. Yeah. I did that. <laughs> but my point of the whole reason for bringing this up, yes, Kodak wants to be relevant again, and 1,400 people died from cancer since we started this segment, and they're not yeah. researching this. But let's make a beer that can double as a chemical. Double as a chemical. Yeah. <laughs> I'll drink it. I mean, what the hell is? Well, we're this? all gonna try it. Oh yeah. yeah I'm gonna drink it. Yeah, I just, I, I don't get it. There's three groups of people that are happy about this. People over 60, photographers like your wife, and fucking, <laughs> and fucking hipsters that yeah. want to pretend to be someone else. Yeah, exactly. Oh, look at me, I'm 23, but I feel like a 55-year-old man. Shut the fuck yeah. up. <laughs> Take off your sister's jeans. Yeah, fucking, yeah. <laughs> your grandmother's glasses. Go get a job like the rest of us. Yep. Douchebag. Exactly. Exactly. My favorite new trend, because you know, we always talk about Darwin, or at least you do. You always bring up social Darwinism. I think it's great that the best new trend with hipsters is hey, combining craft beer of high alcohol volume and axe throwing. Yeah. Like, this is yeah. a big yes. deal. It's everywhere now. It's all over Brooklyn. Because it not there's only a did... Bo- there's a place in Providence. Yep. Oh, is it Providence? It's mm-hmm. Providence. But the thing is, those are still wide open spaces. In Brooklyn, they're literally cramming these assholes down into a basement and they're putting logs in there and saying, go. And I think nothing could be happier. You're going to see the property value in New York. I'm going to create a craft beer artillery bar. <laughs> <laughs> you just drop the things in the tubes like, go. Boom, ping. Just aim it at Fall River. Yeah. No one will notice. No one will, everybody will be psyched. Yeah. <laughs> we should try to do a show at one of these axe bars. Yeah. Just commentary on drunk people that's, throwing axes. Yeah, that's a, I'm like, here's some beer. Throw All this four axe. of us are here. Well, three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never mind. Yeah, never mind. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, axe throwing's fun. I get it. Uh huh. You know, you're going to add alcohol to it, which is going to make axe throwing. Way more fun <laughs> for you, <laughs> for, uh, f- yes, for me, <laughs> for you, the thrower, not the people around me. No, <laughs> Yo. 
I wouldn't even go bowling with you drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't imagine what you'd be like with an axe in your hands, much less like mortars yeah. that you were just on. <laughs> the good thing, though, is you could like document the moment because they'll just develop the picture right yeah, there. Yeah. It'll be great. Because <laughs> we haven't talked about anal stuff in a few minutes. <laughs> Marsha Cross. If you don't know the name, good. You belong as a listener to this show. Yeah. Marsha Cross was on a show called Prolapsed Housewife. I mean, Desperate Housewife. <laughs> <laughs> Marsha Cross was one of the, the desperate housewives of Wisteria Lane. Before that, she did a tour de force performance as a psychotic bitch on Melrose Place. So, yeah. and so if you're wondering why you haven't seen her at the Emmys, there's your answer. But she decided this was the optimal week to come out and say she wants to, quote, put a dent in the stigma around anal cancer. <laughs> I don't think there's a stigma around anal cancer. I think we can all agree it's one of the worst ways to get yeah, cancer. Cause, exactly. Because you still have to talk about this to people. Where'd you get cancer? Oh, the liver, the spleen, the pancreas. You know, the, oh, that's terrible. I got it in my ass. It's a horrible way to describe yeah, something even uh -huh. more horrible. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is she tried to, I look at it, she tried to come out like a hero, like a... Uh, I'm going to be the face of yes, anal cancer. I'm going to be the face of anal cancer. <laughs> she got half of it down. Have yeah, you seen she, her? <laughs> she's a fiery to redhead. Me, and to me, all it, all it was to me was, I am going to do this before TMZ talks about my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what, what, that's was what TMZ me. stands for. Too many zits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's... But that's what I'm saying. She tried to come out like a hero. Whatever. You know, she, she, she got it. She survived it. Good for her. Congratulations. Happy for you. Um, but my favorite part was she said, I am now a big fan of the anus. <laughs> In the article, she, this is a quote. I am now a big fan of the anus. You know what? We, we haven't done in ages. I think we need a slow clap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That her husband loves it because he's going and drilling, well, drilling her in the ass now, and there's bumps along the way. Well, all I'm thinking is th that poor bass is going to come home to like tons of anus artwork. <laughs> <laughs> in the house now. Like, just assholes everywhere, and then he's definitely getting those asshole chocolates for Valentine's Day. Oh, I love those yeah. things. <laughs> I didn't need anal cancer to be a big fan of the anus. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, already I'm, there. We're all on board. <laughs> no need to go to that length. Well, what? She had to come out like, "Are you that irrelevant that you need to come out and be like, hey, you remember me? Because when people want to think of a dead, decaying, decaying asshole, that's who you want to yeah. think of." <laughs> <laughs> it's renewed my spirits because when I think of a dead, decaying asshole, I just thought Steven Skull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He now has company. <laughs> I bet her asshole has fewer lumps than Steven Seagal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> just trying to imagine that. You walk into the foyer and it's just puckered assholes. That's a, a, you know it's artwork of bungholes now yeah. everywhere. Like assy Warhol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Warhol. Assy Warhol. <laughs> Got Campbell's soup? No. Anus? Yes. <laughs> oh. Picasso. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, shit. fucking her now. Just sound like a zipper going up and down. <laughs> Which I, which I guess is a natural transition to the final topic of the evening. Right. <laughs> Speaking of a bunch of lumpy assholes, and we were, believe me. Yeah. Uh, last week we covered Birdemic, and a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people really either loved or hated our review of Birdemic, and then the best movie we ever made. Yeah, it's up there. Then they all hated us just for talking about it because they watched it. Yes. So I had fully intended to start this week by watching Birdemic 2. I watched it. Because the story wasn't over. No. Those birds went out to sea, but I need to know why. <laughs> <laughs> but one story that didn't need to be told is the one I actually watched this week. 
it was all over the news. For some reason, Motley Crue downloads are up this week, and the reason for it is the Netflix original, The Dirt, which yeah. is not the Marsha Cross anal polyp story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, that story's cleaner than this That's one. That's called yeah. The Hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet her panties had a motley stew. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I kind of buried the lead there. Yeah, The Dirt is a biopic about yeah. Motley Crue. Yes. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to give it to you. If that's Motley... as close as you're going to get as to Brad admitting you were right. I, if, thank you. If Motley Crue can spell the word C-R-U-E with an umlaut, <laughs> I'll give you one biopic a week. All right? <laughs> thank you. But anyway, so this biopic was actually about the, the, the rise and fall and rise again of the 80s. I guess you could call them probably the biggest hair band that come yeah, out yeah, of the Icons. 80s. Of the 80s. They the, were. You know, hard rock, heavy metal, glam rock, whatever you wanted to call them, they were big. And for some reason, up until a couple of years ago, they were still relevant. Yeah. They're still playing arenas. What I hated was that the band was actually executive producers of this movie. And yet they got so much of it wrong. Yeah, they got their <laughs> own story wrong from their own book. Yes. <laughs> that was, the, yeah, it was so The, the executive produced their own biography. Yeah. Kind of like. Peter Griffin presents a Peter Griffin story yep. of a Peter Griffin's whatever. Yeah. 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 The and King and I. And then editing it for television. And the, Yeah. yeah. Oh my it God. was so inaccurate. Now, I understand there's certain things they want to glaze over. At no point during yeah. this movie did you hear the name Pamela Anderson. Never no. came up. Which is funny because Tommy Lee spent the 90s glazing over her. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and punching her in the teeth. <laughs> Actually, that did make the movie, but not Pam Anderson. Not Pam no, Anderson. No, it was a different no. whore that he punched. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just a random whore that you didn't care about. Not Heather Locklear. Yeah. Not other, because you know he beat the shit out of her, too. But I hated what they did, though. No, they yeah, made it they look did. like he reacted to something this, this hooker said to him. And she was a hooker. His mom basically was like, he had a good childhood. That's what we learned. That was, yeah. You he had learned. a great childhood. Very supportive parents. They were all about him becoming a rock star. They realized he wasn't a Rhodes Scholar. He wasn't going to go work yeah. at the Oxford they, Dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but the guy had really supportive parents, and this groupie that he was banging, he goes up and introduces his parents to them and says, yeah, she's my fiance. And the mom, who's Greek, doesn't speak English very well, actually said, are you groupie? And she didn't mean it badly. But the girl took it exactly as should have taken it because yep. she was a whore. Yes, she was a whore. <laughs> and so she was fucking Nikki so, Six three minutes before that. That's right. She was offended by the truth. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, she was banging Nikki Six in the dressing room right before the concert. Right before she met Tommy Lee's mother. That's why I said assholes. They they're not friends. They were scumbags. To each other, to and, everybody else. And that's why the movie was a lie, because they all made it look like their brotherhood was what got them back together. Yeah. Again, you expect certain things to be glazed over for the sake of time. They had two-hour running time. They could have done a lot of different things here. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to dive into some of the things that I pointed out. Craig, you've seen the film. Yes. And Dave, you're just a bastion of useless knowledge. You should be able to chime in. <laughs> yep. Okay, so the band was Nikki Six's brainchild. Yeah. That was kind of a loose use of the word brain. Yeah. <laughs> but they actually came in, and they were all from different bands. One was in a cover band, one guy was just starting out, yep. and one guy was a fucking relic, even by their standards. <laughs> yeah. He came in, he already had a back. He problem. was like forty he was like thirty four years old when they started. He was he was roughly in his early thirties on paper. Yeah. I think he was pushing forty then. Well, I, mean, I know his I know his birth date of his year birth year is still up for debate. Like it's no, not, it's been not confirmed, up right? For debate Mars? Because he was arrested when he shot that girl in the stomach. Right. <laughs> Right. It was an accident. Yeah. You know. But uh and that was 1995. He was 43. So he's he's almost he's 70 years old. If if not older. Well, no. I mean, do the math. Yeah, but he changed his name at one point in his career like around 1980 or so, right, to Mick Mars. Yeah. Yeah, yep. so but his background has been kind of debated. Yeah, that's true. To some extent. He yep. was in performing rock bands as early as 1961. Yeah. Yeah, he learned guitar before Bob Dylan plugged in and changed music. Okay. <laughs> and, and we'll address that after we get through Motley Crue. Yeah. <laughs> but, so that, but that's one thing they got wrong right off the bat. 
in this movie, they hired an actor who made it look like Mick was like a few minutes older than the rest yeah. of the band. <laughs> Ramsey Bolton. Come on. Yes. He's Every actually t- a musician, though, that kid. Is he? Yeah. He's a, not an actor. No. <laughs> <laughs> the whole movie made him seem like he was like the moral compass of the band. Yeah, and it, it was it was awful. This you, band you has no moral compass. You were in Motley Crue. You were the guitar player for Motley Crue. You may not have like you know assaulted that many women, but you still assaulted women. You did it. Yeah. Just comparatively yeah. speaking, you were the better one. They made him seem like the meditative one, the yeah. one that kept them all in line. That's a bunch of shit, and you know it. Um, it just took longer for him to get ready. They never acknowledged <laughs> the band's first singer. No, they didn't. The band had another singer. They recorded a demo and shopped at the labels. What I think they did, though, and, and it was they mixed them with that guitar, the other guitarist. But why mix them? Why not just they, say well, we had exactly. another singer? Bad they, director. They constantly broke the fourth wall and were talking yeah. to the to the audience, which Na- was yeah, dumb. narrative. And at one point, they even poked fun at themselves and said, that guy, he th- this never happened. And they said yeah. this, this whole so scene. What's the point? Why, why film it? Why yeah. are you wasting this scene when there was the book is 600 pages long? There's plenty of story to tell. I didn't like this band. I'll just I'll come right out and say yeah. it from the side. I hate the band, but they have a story. That's why I watched the yeah. fucking thing. Well, see, I was a fan of Motley Crue. They were my like that was my age. I've seen Motley Crue about four or five times live, um, and it. I mean, I thought they were cool at the time. I liked them, but if if you have like you said, you have a six hundred page book. Why would you take that story and say, well, this never actually happened, but this is the guy that we met? Yeah. Why wouldn't you just say how you met? Because it wasn't cool enough for your debauchery movie? (laughs) Which is really all this was. That's all it was. You guys were dickheads. We get it. (laughs) And And they were. And we got away with it. And Yeah. Yeah. I died from heroin use. And then it went and shot up again. But hey, guess what, kids? I came out okay, so you can do it too. Yeah, yeah. that was my big takeaway. Well, oh my yeah, God. and then not only that, just the whole thing. They were when they first started out. Like I said, Tommy Lee is <coughs> going to introduce his girlfriend to his mother. Three minutes before that, Nikki Six is banging that girl in his dressing room, and then uh, it was it Pete Davidson? Oh, my hero! Yeah, <laughs> his his character. He plays the the. Um, Record was it the um, he was the record was the rep. he was a, was a rep. beginning music rep yeah. from Electra that said I need to get somebody so he shows up at their show and says I'll give you a record deal yeah and he gave him a five album deal right out of the gate yeah and they never lived up to and it. they never lived up to it <laughs> but at the same time he shows up he's at the show with this girlfriend Vince Neil bangs his girlfriend I'm like so these guys weren't loyal to anybody. They didn't no, give a shit give about a shit. anybody. I think what they were trying to get across is that they were using women as interchangeable playthings. Yeah. And that's why they made such a big deal out of Heather Locklear because the whole movie, they make Tommy Lee look like he was this innocent farm boy. Yeah, they did make him look like a dummy. He, he like, made him look hey like guys, a... Well, naive. Golly. I don't think he was a dummy. They made him look naive. Naive, yeah. If you know anything about Tommy Lee now, and if, if you watch TV, you know, yeah. Tommy Lee ain't naive. He's not the sympathetic character that everyone roots for. <laughs> Exactly. He's yeah. a fucking douchebag. He's a douchebag. They tried to make him out to be yeah. like Woody on He's Cheers. a chauvinistic douchebag that just wants to bang women and, and do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. And they they got him all wrong. They also made Nikki Six look like this introspective deep guy. He's not. He's he, not. Yeah. He's not. I he's don't a, care. He's a fifty three year old hipster. He's a douche too. Fifty three. Try sixty one. That's what I said. Is yeah. he sixty one? Yeah. yeah. Have yeah. you seen he's still trying to look like <clears throat> like with his stringy yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. colored hair. Well, the, well the wig doesn't age. Ugh, no. Don't worry about that. They got his daughter. No, Vince Neil's daughter died. We all know this. Okay? And, yeah, and, and that was that was the one part of the movie I said, you know what? All right. Except that it didn't go down like that either. No, it first didn't. of all, they it had didn't. they had his wife at the time pregnant in 1985, based on the movie's timeline. How do you get your own daughter's birth date wrong? She was yeah. born in 1991. Yeah. That's a six year gap and a big six years in that band's history. You just decided to throw it in that your wife was pregnant by putting her in the background of the party, and next thing you know, she's five. Yeah. The band's are like a year later on tour, and she's five now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then she's seven six years later when she dies. Oh, my God. And then they made it seem like Vince just collapsed into this ball of nothing. And I'm not saying he didn't have that moment, he's still a father. Yeah. But he, he also he went was... on tour and made two albums. Yeah. He did not sit and wallow at a bar, and then the band didn't rally around and come get him to rejoin the band. Because if you don't like Motley Crue, uh, Vince Neil got, he quit, 
or yeah, got he fired. Yeah, he quit the band. I think he didn't necessarily quit, kind of drifted off. His daughter died. Sure. Went, but he wasn't living, he, he wasn't hanging out daily at a local dive bar. Right. And that's what, what it made it seem like. And they were like, even that, they're like, hey, even the boss is like, hey, Vince, Molly Cruz here. Yeah, you know, like to come and try to suck. It was it was ridiculous. Oh they could have, they didn't want to make him look bad because all he did was make two albums that sounded like Motley Crue. Yeah, and then he went on tour and did ninety five percent Motley Crue songs in concert. The yeah. voice of Motley Crue, it's to be expected. Yeah, yeah. but if you actually stop and think about it, he would rather bastardize the memory of his own daughter and how she went down and his reaction to it than actually tell the truth that he was a failure as a solo artist. Yeah. That's exactly where these guys are coming from. So, yeah, you might get chills when you see the little girl die in bed, but you're not getting chills when you realize that Vince Neil was willing to lie yeah. about the death of his own daughter. He's a pathetic piece of shit just like the rest but of them. But that's the truth of, of all of them. The, the, and Craig hit it a few minutes ago. These guys are only focused on one thing, and it's themselves. Yeah. They're arrogant pieces of shit. I was amazed by, like, not amazed by. It. I knew they were, I knew they did ridiculous shit, but the, to see it and then to see through it, that was like you said, yeah. To see through it, I'm like, that's not how that went. And why would you say this didn't actually happen? It, but we like, showed it to you, and it's not You're like just you trying to, be, to hype yourselves up to look cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're they're trying to bank on the fact that no one's gonna remember what actually happened. <laughs> yeah, and that this movie will make them relevant and cool and sympathetic. Again. Except yeah. for the fact that the 99 percent of the downloads this week were from Motley Crue fans, people that had stopped <laughs> listening to Motley That's Crue right. and are now into Motley Crue again. They all know the fucking story. Yeah, I wouldn't have watched it if it wasn't for my wife who said. I'd like to see that Motley Crue thing because I didn't give two shits about it. I yeah. mean, like I said, I like Motley Crue. I've seen him like four or five times. You know, I saw him once I, without Vince Neil. I saw him in a really? club. Did you? Yeah. I, I got cheap tickets. I said, you know what? I'm never going to get closer to this band. Yeah. Let's see what they're I tell you, they kicked ass. No, yeah. That was they, arguably their best album. Yeah. Because it was heavier. They yeah. were trying but to they, be like Alice in Chains. Yeah. That's who they could have been, though. Like it went, in the 80s, they were those. I hate to throw air quotes, those bad boys in that glam yeah. rock era. They were they glam had, metal. But they had a heavier they sound. Did. They had the potential to be a much heavier, harder band. Yeah. And you could hear it in some of their music, and they just it just fizzled. Well, that's actually the reason Vince quit. And they didn't cover that either. They 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 glossed over the whole change in singer thing. Yeah. They didn't even give the guy a line. They didn't, never heard him sing a note. Yeah. They don't acknowledge those songs. They never play them live. That was one of their best albums. But I will say this. They made it look like Vince quit because of disagreements and the band wasn't understanding his personal play. Yeah. Vince quit because he didn't couldn't do his pretty boy singing over the heavy music they were writing. Yeah. And he, he was he's like Dr. Feelgood was about as heavy as I could go. I uh, no, it wasn't. Well, the next <laughs> he can go way heavier. Well, we, we're going to get to that. <laughs> He's actually four-dimensional yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. He broke the fourth wall with his fucking gut. Yeah. <laughs> but So the, the rest of it, though, then the, at the end, it was like that typical biography thing where words on a screen make up for the fact that, yeah. they like said, they played together 20 more years. Yeah, and Tommy Lee, the, the heart and soul, the kid that we were all rooting for, quit the band twice. Yep. Yeah. And then but got married seven more times, had more domestics than Heinz and has beat varieties. up every single one of his wives yeah. like a yeah. piece of shit. Exactly. He, he's, he's a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. But even in the movie, there was one scene that was real. It was when they got into the car accident and killed the guy from Hanoi Rocks. Yeah, we Razzle. Got Razzle. The right car that he was in, it was like a Pantera or something like that. It was it was one of those old 60s muscle cars. Yeah. It was in the driveway. If you go back and watch the movie, there's one actually sitting there in the driveway. And they took off in the And they took off in the yeah. vet. Yeah. They couldn't even get their own death story right, where he served time for vehicular manslaughter. Yeah. Okay. And they couldn't even get that story right. This shows you how dumb they are. This movie was a pathetic piece of shit. I'm giving it one out of five turds, and that was only because Tommy Lee was played by a rapper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, Tommy Lee thinks he's a rapper now. Have you seen him? He's just, he's got his hat. He always has his hat sideways, like a little off to the side, with no shirt on. He looks like a fucking dog hide couch, and fucking <laughs> with fucking writing on it. Like he, just, he looks 
fuck, he's gross. I can't so wait to see him, him at eighty because you know he'll live that long. They always. Oh do. no, he will. But he's got that like saggy like the mayhem on his stomach. He's yeah. hanging next to his balls. <laughs> yeah, and you can't really lean because his nipples are over it. The mayhem just says, mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. So Brad's just, review, you he just says ham. Yeah, on his, <laughs> on his, on his hip. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got a picture of Vince Neil right next. Yeah. <laughs> so Brad's review: You give this movie one cancer anus out of five. That's it. One, okay. <laughs> one Marsha's cross. One polyp. It's one polyp out of five. Hearing that you guys talk about this review, it, it's it changed kind of my perspective on Motley Crue. I knew him just for the music. Yeah. Some of these popular stories. And now, I'm hoping this doesn't become a trend. Like all these other bands decide, hey, let's go make a biopic. <laughs> and, yes, but I hope yeah. it's not a trend for bands that were popular for like three years. Well, Def Leppard did it about five years ago, and that movie's even worse than this one. Yeah, I but, just yeah. I, I say that because fuck you, Coldplay. That's why. Yeah. I say oh God, play. yes. That, that yeah, nobody gives a fuck no. about them. Watching a movie about Coldplay would be like watching Coldplay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just a two hour suicide video. <laughs> exactly. Well, speaking of which, I hope Pete Davidson actually watches this movie because <laughs> then I'm going to win all sorts of cash in this pool. <laughs> I mean, even by Pete Davidson standards, which are pretty lofty, uh, I'm pretty sure that this one ain't going to make it no. to the top of his list. What a stinking turd. Netflix should be ashamed of themselves after putting out so many things, original things that took new... T- they re- was, they but- reinvented the Twilight Zone. They've done so many cool things on Netflix that were women empowering and all these other things. And yes, I'm, I realize the irony of us saying that. No, but, yeah. But all joking aside, we are all for that. This movie just brought us right back to a time that was... Let's just call it the uh, feminism dark ages. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a bad scene all around. I, again, don't even watch it unless you want to see Pete Davidson's final live performance. <laughs> yep, exactly. It's, it was ridiculous. But uh, the funny thing is, I think now, if you've seen, like, we watched that video of Vince Neil singing Wild Side. Oh, God. And he's got to weigh 310. Uh, if, if not more. If not more. Should have renamed it Wild Turkey. He could not. <laughs> he can't hit a single note. He's not even actually completing the lyrics. If you know anything about Vince Neil, and you said you've seen him four times, no, he, he he's can't always sing. struggled. No, with he's that. can't sing. He no, just he, makes he, sounds. He couldn't keep up with it. No, it wasn't just that he couldn't hit the notes. Yeah. He could sing in the studio. Yeah, he couldn't keep up with the music well, and walk. And what? Well, the <laughs> thing was, he was he was trying to be that showman, and I I seen it, and and it was, but. The music was actually the music was always tight. I'll say that. Same thing with uh, Guns N' Roses. The music was fine. The singing was off key yep. and off time. But Axl Rose only ate fucking forty pounds of donuts. <laughs> Vince Neil <laughs> ate fucking four thousand pounds of donuts. Oh, yeah, Vince Neil. He he was always out of shape after he left Motley Crue the first time. He never yeah. quite got it back. He never got in good shape for his farewell tour. He looked pregnant. More pregnant than he made his wife look in 1985 when it was yeah. seven years before his daughter was actually born. That would have been a long fucking pregnancy right there. Uh, he looked terrible, but we figured we haven't done a roundup in a while. No, we haven't done a roundup. So given how fat, lardy, and out of breath Vince Neil <laughs> looked on their latest video, the, the, their their closing statement. Yes. Their D- coda. Yeah, this is supposed to be, yeah. This, this, this is, is us. Remember us this fondly. Is the one. Yeah. Uh, we wonder how... He might rename the band's classic songs given his new appetite for good nutrition. <laughs> yep. And I, I can't help myself. I got to start out with the obvious shout at the bagel. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking wild wings. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I knew you guys were going to cover the songs more. You knew more songs. Yeah. I, I decided to go with their, their discography. So their first album, I was thinking Too Fat for Love. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Nice. And that's discography. Well, that's Dis- right. Dis- discography. I'm sorry. Right. Yep. <laughs> and then to go along with Brad's shout at the bagel, I thought, you know, shout at the devil dogs. Nice. <laughs> nice. I was a big fan of grills, grills, grills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Glad without food in my life. <laughs> you hit four more notes than he did yeah. on his farewell right. concert. You should have sang it. Without food in my heart. Yeah. It's no, just no words. Just, no, no he words. did. He was like Slob Dylan. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I, I like your next album, actually, right under Devil Dogs there. Oh, Theater of Gain? That was huge. Yeah. <laughs> Tremendous. Tremendous. It makes mine look weak. I had sh- smoking pork shoulder in the boys' room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like defib my heart. Defib my heart. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I took a different take on the, the girls, girls, girls. I was thinking Vince's favorite dessert. Chocolate, vanilla, swirl, swirl, swirl. Yeah. I thought you were describing his toilet when I read that. Yeah. <laughs> or it could be Marsha Cross's asshole. Nice. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep. Oh, God, that, that's never going to get old. No, no it's, it's not. Th- this whole episode was just repeating the same jokes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I take blame for that. But with that, I'll give you Dr. Veelgood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have that, like, home sweet home fries. <laughs> like, get a piece of your sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that time they covered the Sex Pistols and did Anarchy in the KFC? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's got the cooks that grill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so then Motley Chew finally gave us Generation Swine, which was perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's it. I love, they, I love they, the outline. No change. They, no they, change. Yeah. That's they finally it, that's owned it. it. <laughs> That's it. You just had a song named Hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> and I, my last one was it's so dumb, but too young to fall in a fryer later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I had red hot chili. That was. <laughs> <good. laughs> so too young to fall in a fryer later was on the album Dr. Greasehood. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck Motley Crue. That's where we're going yeah. with this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I do want to say this. Dave went through the entire discography. I did. Including the albums nobody bought recently. That's right. But I have to give a shout out for its yes. stains on I, most pantalones. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. One of the funniest things. I don't laugh out loud much when I'm sitting alone because it's just weird. That made me laugh out loud. That was a legit LOL. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like typing LOL too much. That was a legit LOL. Now, I don't know what the last album was, but Dave, for some reason, I guess he was just thinking about it, wrote Girth. I just, well, I was <laughs> Up and coming. That's <laughs> That drops next week. <laughs> it, it should have been the girth instead of the dirt. Yep. Oh, the dirt. The girth. Oh, that's yeah. what you were going for. That's, I just, that's all right. It just randomly went. It made girth. sense in my head. Girth. Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this is a weird, weird fucking week. Yeah. We repeated a lot of jokes. Craig can't pronounce shit. Don't think that he can. I can. Just stop. Just stop. No. He spent seven days enunciating by himself at home. See so you. <laughs> You're killing our brand because the one thing we always say is we're going to be sloppy, we're going to be loud, we're going to be we're going to talk over each other, but we're always going to be honest. And you're not being honest right I'm now. I'm being 100. percent I I pronounced it right. No, you didn't. I did. Okay. Well, I'll stand by this. All right, stand by something else. Uh let's do a little <laughs> fucking housekeeping. Uh big shout out to Wayne. Yes. I'd yes, like to thank yes. Wayne. Wayne got on Twitter recently. And no, he's got Wayne's a, awesome, man. Wayne's a great guy. We haven't mentioned him in a while, but Wayne has been shouting us and, and putting us down in recommendations for people looking for podcasts, yep. which is something I encourage all of you to do. Yes. So if you guys see those things on Facebook and they're everywhere, somebody asks for a podcast, give them, give them a link. Yeah. We'd love that. Yeah, why not? And uh, while you're at it, come see us on social media as well. Back yep. on Instagram. Back. Yeah, Back, things are moving. I, we're moving. Rapid fire on Instagram. Yes. Yeah, one a day. One we a got day. things going on. We're, we're moving like Vince Neil's bowels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you'll you'll find us there. What Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I think yeah. we're also on BlackChristianPeopleMeet.com. Yep. Mike has a MySpace huh? page. <laughs> no, we're not there yet. We're not on a Black Christian My People goodness. Meet. We're on SmarmersOnly.com. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so most of those places you can find us. Yeah, yeah. At NTS underscore podcast. Yeah, look for us. And actually, go to sites we didn't mention and look for NTS <laughs> underscore podcast there as well. I'd be real curious to see what turns up on Farmers Only. <laughs> NTS, not the sheep. Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, go to go to the needless to say swag shop on Teespring. You know how to search for shit. Go buy our stuff. Um, we're gonna have some new stuff. I always say it every week, but if you're new here, we're gonna have new stuff. So go buy the old stuff to make room for the new stuff. That's right. Uh, with that, I have no other music announcements. I have no other show announcements. Do we have anything coming up that we should be mentioning? That's it. I will say this. Craig and I and Dave a little bit, we've been kind of bouncing around the idea of doing a live show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. Yes. And so I, we're not going to announce anything because nothing's been no, organized. No, nothing's been set. But it's... Don't be surprised if we start pushing this. Yeah. Wheels are in motion. Wheels are in motion. We're talking about it. it it'll happen eventually. It's just when and how we, we're going to get that going. All right. Well... It was a fun night, guys. It was. Agreed. Weird, sloppy ending. Motley, uh, Mo I can't believe we choked on Motley Crue. Yeah. But we're great when Marsha crosses rectum. <laughs> Did you we're, just say no, sloppy funny. ending and we choked on Motley Crue yeah. and There's no one's going to tell a joke there? thousand girls that choked on Motley Crue for years. <laughs> Thank and, so, you. and now three guys. All sloppily. Yeah, all sloppily. <laughs> Well, I'm going to redo that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. That's staying in. All right, fuck it. I know better than to argue with Craig. He's just going to make it louder. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't you pronounce this correctly, Craig? Take us out. Needless to say, we said it. <laughs>